if we train our children, if we educate our children only to be educated for college and then to get a job, we, we failed. Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. I am so glad you've joined me today. I have a really, really exciting guest on this week and I know you are gonna be so greatly encouraged by him. But before we get to our guest, I wanna thank our sponsor, CTC Math. If you're looking for a great online math curriculum, go to ctcmath.com. You can do a free trial of their math program. You will not be disappointed. Try them out, ctcmath.com. Well, we have a very exciting guest on today. His name is Dr. Mark Hamby, and I know that he is familiar to so many of you because if you have been introduced as a homeschool family to Lamplighter Ministries and their amazing resources that they have, you've certainly heard of Dr. Hamby. And this is one, you know, we for years and years and years, I've heard of Lamplighter Ministries and Lamplighter Books and Lamplighter Drama, uh, their drama series and all the things that they have. And I had never heard them until recently. Well, listened to the drama series and, and gotten my hands on their books. And let me just tell you guys, they are absolutely amazing. And we are so honored to have Dr. Hamby with us this week because he's going to talk to us about reading and the importance of the things that we're putting into our minds as we read. You know, of course, the most important book that we read is the Word of God. That's where everything starts. But as homeschool parents, we have an opportunity to feed life into the minds of our kids through literature and through production of different uh, audio dramas and things like that. And so I want to introduce you to Dr. Hamby. If you don't know him, um, he and his wife are the executive producers of Lamplighter Theater and Lamplighter Ministries. They have two over 235 books from the 17th to 19th century literature. And um, I think I want to say over 28 audio dramas. Is that correct? Mm -hmm, 30. Mm -hmm. 30. You're at 30. Wow. That's well, incredible. Um, welcome, Dr. Hamby, to the program. Thanks, Yvette. And you can call me Mark. Mark. I, you know, it's funny. I asked you that before the show. How, what do you want me to refer to you as? And then for some reason, it just seems natural to call you Dr. Hamby. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> I will call you Mark. I know you've spoken at many homeschool conventions in the past several years. And so you know the homeschool world really mm -hmm. well, and you have a heart for homeschool families. Mm -hmm. So I would I want to kind of jump off on that note and tell us how you got involved in the homeschool world. Well, I came to know Jesus as my Savior at 22 years old. I was a non-reader. Um, I, I hated to read. Uh, reading um, felt like throwing up to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, went to a college went through four years of college and switched my majors um, six times. Uh, senior year of college, I came to know Jesus as my Savior. And in that, uh, at that moment, um, going back, I was going back to my senior year. I knew exactly what I wanted to do with my life. I wanted to be a teacher. And I had to go two extra years uh, to college during that time. And in the, you know, as soon as I finished, I became the uh, principal of a Christian school. And uh, they sent me down to Pensacola to get a master's degree in administration. And while I was studying and, and uh, running the school, I got to see how education worked from the inside, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and I, I, was, I was seeing the, the failure of education. You know, you, you put these kids in a classroom and, you know, they learn everything they're supposed to be learning in the curriculum. But when they get out, I was watching the graduates, you know, five years afterwards, 10 years afterwards, and I was not seeing them following Jesus. Yeah. And if, if we train our children, if we educate our children only to be educated for college and then to get a job, we, we failed. And so I started really searching my heart. What, what really will make, what will prepare a child, not just for this life, but for the life to come? And um, I believe I found it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So as the interview, you know, progresses, we'll hear more about that in the answer. Yeah, that's exciting. It's interesting to hear you tell that story because I grew up in a Christian school my entire life, except for one year. And it's, it's sad and shocking to me how many of my classmates, after being in a Christian school, pretty much their whole life as well, came out of it and just completely walked away from their faith, you know, and, and even for myself, I felt like I came out of it, not really having any real foundation. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I also hated to read <laughs> and I, I love to read now. Mm, me too. You know, it's, you know, it's even sadder and scarier is what's happening in the homeschool movement. Yeah. Um, so I've been, I've been doing this, this will be now like 32 years. And uh, 
you know, when I was the principal, we started homeschooling our own children during that time because I saw that homeschooling was going to be the most important part, most valuable part of their education. But I'm, I'm seeing children not following the Lord, even through the homeschool movement, especially um, children that are growing up with controlling, dominating type of parenting. And so we're going to, we'll talk about that during this discussion as well. Yeah, I actually, can we park there for a little bit and yeah. talk about that now? Why, sure. why do you think you're seeing that trend? Well, um, I'm watching, um, I'm watching men, especially, you know, we're living in a day when um, masculinity is not, um, it's, it's, it's not understood biblically. Right. Uh, a lot of, a lot of dads, and I'm not putting dads down if they're doing this, because if God's led them back home, that's fine. Um, um, but a lot of times um, I'm seeing a reversal of roles, you know, where the, the wife is doing the majority of the, of, um, you know, making ends meet, and the husband now is doing a lot of the teaching at home. Um, you know, John Adams spent two years in France, leaving, I think, eight children behind, eight or nine children behind, took one of his sons with him. And we won the, we won the, the war as a result of that, that sacrifice that he made. Um, dad, dad needs to get out and show his children what work is like. He needs to be able to um, work heartily unto the Lord. Whatever his hand finds to do, he needs to do it with all his might. I think I think a dad sets the example of what of what a man is called to do. Um, when the children of Israel came out of uh, Egypt, um, the first complaint was toward Moses that we need to go back because our this is hurting our children and hurting our wives. Therefore, let's go back to the safety of Egypt when it really would have oppressed them more. And so the men were com the men were using their families as an excuse as to why they shouldn't um, go through this really difficult time in their life. And I think that today, you know, men need to prove themselves as men. They need to go through the, you know, a little bit of the wilderness and really sacrifice for their families and their children. And um, it takes, it takes a lot of sacrifice. Some men need to go back to school. Some men need to take that second job. Some, it's, it's not always about being at home, even though I, I love that. And, I, and I, I think we need to work toward that. God will give that reward. You know, following Jesus, you know, <laughs> Peter was married. You know, Peter, come and follow me. But I got a wife at home, you know, but follow me. You know, and uh, Peter wasn't always at home. He had to do some, he had to sacrifice. Uh, and then he had to pay his taxes, you know. And Jesus said, go find that fish. and I'm gonna, You're going to find a coin in it. Go pay your taxes, you know. <laughs> so there's, not everybody is called to do this, but we're called to be kingdom warriors. Men are. Mm -hmm. We're kings, prophet, priests, um, servants. And whenever that pillar gets out of balance, um, trouble arises. And I think the, the ones that, that lose the most are our children. They're watching the way a man is supposed to be. And um, men are supposed to be kings, warriors. Um, they're supposed to be the high priests and they sacrifice. And so I'm, I'm trying to bring that back into our culture, especially in homeschooling, so that, um, so that men are doing what God's called them to do. And, and they may be at home, but sure. we can't use our home as an excuse not to do the things that God's called us to do. Right, right. And we need to be raising up young men yeah. to do that as well. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. that's hard to do um, in our society today. And I want to talk more uh, about that, but let's first take a quick break. What we do at IEW is break through the, the noise of the grammar and the writing prompts. And we say, this is what you do step by step. And I've witnessed it over and over again, both watching Andrew teach and hearing from parents, this is the best writing program. We've made it so easy and made it really affordable. So any mom can teach writing to their children using our course, and we guarantee it. To try three weeks of free lessons, visit IEW.com. We are back with Mark. Um, so I want to talk uh, uh, kind of about that because so much I think of what's happening in culture today is because of the influence of what our kids are exposed to, whether mm. that's, you know, video games or mm -hmm. TV shows or movies or me just whatever media they have in their hands. And this goes for both boys and girls. Mm -hmm. And the stuff that we're putting in front of our kids is influencing them you know, beyond what we were influenced, I think, when we were growing up, because we didn't have access to all of these things, of course. And um, so how, how, how can we shift that paradigm of mm -hmm. taking question. kids from what they have today and bringing in, bringing them back to God's design for the family? Great question. Easy answer. 
Um, first, I'm going to tell you about a study that was conducted in Canada, I think in the 60s, if I'm not mistaken. Um, a little little town, I think of about 2,000 people. Again, don't hold me to the statistics. Okay. It's been a long time since I read about this. this uh, I think I put it in my dissertation. And uh, they removed all media influence in the entire village for approximately five years. Um, so all the children in school, church, home, there was no media influence whatsoever. And they compared the children in that village to a children that was highly dominated by media. And they found at the end of the five years that the children were absolutely no different. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> it, I it, was it, expecting a different answer. <laughs> it went against everything that I was learning, you know, because of the influence of the media, you know, yeah. it, it rots the brain. You know, I, I, I have 60,000 pages of research that will tell you the damaging effects of the media. Mm -hmm. you know? So I'm like, what, what is this? You know, something's wrong here. So um, in the study, it showed that the, the influence of culture is, is going to permeate is going to influence our children, whether they have a TV or a computer or not, eventually that influence is going to reach them somehow, some way. It's just, it, it does, you know, yeah. we live in this world, it's going to influence us. But what influences a child the most is a greater influence that's appealing, that's attractive, compelling, creative, and Christ-like. When, when a child sees that, for example, um, I, I was never into art. Um, I was. Um, I was never into literature. Um, I wasn't. I wasn't like I said earlier. I, you know, I didn't even read until I was twenty-two. First book I read was the Bible. I read it from Revelation to Genesis. I, I couldn't put it down because I was reading the very words of life for the very first time in my life. And, yeah. and the reason that I hated to read was because I had a very low level of character and I had a very low level of comprehension. When a child is lives in a in a in a fear state. Um, a low level of character will always create a high level of fear. When you have a high level of fear, you generally have a low level of character and comprehension. They go, they go hand in hand. Interesting. Yes. So when you're, when you're confident, um, you know, you usually have a little bit higher level of character and you have a soaring level of comprehension. The smarter kids are the ones that are a little bit more um, secure in who they are. Um, mm -hmm. So for me, I was a very fearful person very low level of character, low level of comprehension. So in school, I always had to be the teacher's pet so that I could have my security by them liking me so that when I had to go for extra credit to get my grade up, they always gave it to me. And so I, I got through high school and college in that way without ever reading a book. Wow. You know, you know so, but, but that takes a lot of effort yeah. you know, to do that. And eventually you're going to get caught. Eventually people are going to find out who you really are. Mm -hmm. So there I was at 22 years old, I had, you know, my senior year of college, I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. I'd already switched my major six times. And my life was, for the most part, worthless, you know, because I wasn't going anywhere. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. And then I got saved. I mean, I got saved like Pilgrim's Progress, better than Pilgrim's <laughs> Progress. I saw the world in living color immediately. It was wow. incredible. And and words became important to me. And the first book that I read was the Bible. I read it from Revelation to Genesis. I couldn't put it down. I was reading four to six hours a night for two, two years. Wow. I, and it's the only book that I read during this time until Charlie Tremendous Jones gave me a book, um, 12 biographies. I started reading them. D.L. Moody, George Mueller, Hudson Taylor, Amy Carmichael, Gladys Allward, Abraham Lincoln, uh, John Huss. I couldn't put them down, you know, and I'm like, whoa, this is like the world just lit up. It, uh, yeah. The lights turned on for me. And so that was the beginning at 22 years old. I, I not only got saved and I was born for the first time in my life, but I had vision now and my comprehension started to soar because my character started to grow. I started to realize there are certain areas of my life that needed to, you know, I was a born liar. I was a good storyteller, but a born liar. So that was one of the first things God had to deal with was he had to change the lying character to speak the truth without fear. Mm -hmm. You know, so God dealt with fear in lying and truth all at the same time. That's the first lesson I learned at age 22 after I got saved. And as soon as that happened, I couldn't put books down. And, and the, the, not only could I not put them down, but they started giving me creative vision for what the future would look like. Yeah. And uh, so, so back to the original question of why children, um, what can we do with our children to being influenced by the media? They're going to be influenced by it. There's nothing you can do about that. You can take everything away from them. That's not going to change their heart. 
Now, I'm not saying you should let him watch things. You know, we, right. need, we, we need to guard our eyes. David in Psalm 103, 101, 3, you know, talks about, you know, that I will guard my eyes, you know, because what we see will affect our heart and eventually right. change our character. You know, so that's a given. But we need to be in love. When I, not only was I getting a vision from what I was reading, but then I started to see beauty for the first time. So um, seeing like a Rembrandt painting close up mm -hmm. for the first time, I cried. I cried when I saw the color green. I've never seen the color green like that ever expressed before. When I started seeing beauty in architecture, beauty in the rainbows, beauty in the sunsets, I started seeing, I started developing a theology of beauty and all of a sudden I wanted more of that. And then I started seeing it in God's word. Then it, that's when everything clicked. I started seeing the beauty of God's word, not just what was written, but how it was written. And as I started becoming more I'm engrossed in the Word of God. I, I started to really dive deep in the Word of God. I mean, Yvette, I don't, I don't know if you could understand this, but I was blown away at what's in this, what's in this book. Mm -hmm. I'm blown away by it. This was 40 years ago. I'm still blown away by it. I'm still finding it never gets old. There's something. Yeah. And so when you, when you fall in love with beauty, when you fall in love with creativity, when you fall in love with the God of the universe and he becomes first and foremost, and children see moms and dads having a relationship like that, that will influence them more than, than media. Yeah. Uh, and that's what, that's what has to happen. Mom and dad, you know, and our children, they have to fall in love and grow in, um, in be intimately in love with this God of the universe who wants to be intimately in love with us. He's, cr by the way, he's crazy in love with us. Yeah. I love that. You know, it's interesting as I'm think I, I'm a very visual person. And so whenever I read a book, I visualize everything that's yeah, happening, yeah. which is why I love yeah. the Lamplighter um, audio dramas, because I, I literally feel like it's a, like I'm in a movie. I'm yeah. watching everything. You know, there's yeah. the, the music and the voices and everything. And, and I feel like I'm there experiencing the story yeah. along with the characters. And it's so fantastic, it, which is even better than a movie, because then I get to make up my own you yes. know, characters and environment and yes. everything that's happening. It's so much fun. But what my, one of my favorite authors of all time, actually probably my favorite author, author of all time is Laura Ingalls Wilder. I absolutely love uh -huh. the little house on the prairie series uh -huh. because she's so descriptive and, mm -hmm. and, and my thinking, of course, the reason I believe that she is so descriptive is because when Mary became blind, she had to become Mary's eyes. And she mm. talks about that, of course, in the series. So she cool. had to literally describe for her everything that was Love surrounding it. her. And yeah. when we learn to do that, that's what yeah. we do when we read God's word, right? Amen. Yep. And like you're saying, it comes to life for us. Yeah. And then that translates into books and all the other things that are part of our world, even our own imagination, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. It just comes to life. We, we get to experience God's amazing creation in a different way. But what's so cool is that's the Holy Spirit working in us. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, when we first started this, we actually made a movie. Um, I got an eighth of the way into the movie, spent $55,000. And um, I was working on my dissertation at the time. I was take, um, taking classes for my doctorate. And I started reading how damaging, literally, anything you watch, anything, okay? It could be Jesus of Nazareth. It's harmful to a child's brain, okay? Because what a child is watching, they're seeing it through their eye gate, goes immediately to the brain. Mm -hmm. And they're watching things in two to four second increments. That's what's causing the ADD type of phenomenon right now. They're starting to think in two to four second illogical, disconnected thought patterns because of what they watch. The United States Army did this in the 1940s when putting strobe lights in front of um, some of the soldiers, and they would attach the, um, you know, the, the electrodes to their heads, and they would do the EEGs, and they would be able to, to graph the brain wave length activity, that same, that same um, technological phenomenon is what we use in television or computers today. And so when children are watching something, anything, it doesn't matter. Whenever there's this transition of two to four second increments, it's programming the way a child thinks. And so that's why it's so dangerous. And so when I, as soon as I was, I'm in the middle of producing this movie and I'm like, I got to stop. And I canceled the movie, spent $55,000, wow. canceled it. The actors, producer, directors were livid with me. They were like, what do you mean? You can't do this. <laughs> like, yeah, I can do it. I'm the one that's paying for it. I'm doing it. 
So that got scrubbed. And then I started realizing that faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So when a child either reads something, mm-hmm. it, that's what connects with the left side of your brain. Generally speaking, left side of your brain. That's, that's where logic and your convictions and your values are stored. The right side of the brain is your pleasure center, and that's your artistic side. And so I'm not saying that the right side is bad, not not because right. that's where your artistic side is, but watching something and allowing your brain to be controlled by the images of another author, that's mm-hmm. where things get really bad. We're allowing our children to be programmed by authors who have a non have an ungodly worldview. We we have to stop it. We're we're losing the battle. Satan is so sinister. He knew exactly what he was doing. He's going to be, be able to reach our children in the living room and in their bedrooms. And we got to we got to control that and give our children a substitute so that the imagination, the theater of the mind kicks in. So what they're hearing, they're doing the imagining, not the author on a movie. Wow, that is some powerful stuff. We are out of time, um, but we will be back on Wednesday to continue this conversation. You can find out more about Dr. Mark Hamby at lamplighter.net um, or what's, what's your other website, drmarkhamby.com? <laughs> lamplighter.net. Just lamplighter.net. Look, go to lamplighter.net and they can do a search for us or call us toll free 1-888, the letter A, gospel, and uh, they'll guide them and send okay. them a catalog. Oh, sounds great. All right, we'll put those links in the show notes. Thank you guys so much for joining us this afternoon. Please be sure to share this podcast with a friend. We will see you back here on Wednesday. Bye. We know that we are called to put on the armor of God. So we are teaching our children to be salt and light in the world, but we're not putting our children out onto the front lines of the battle until they're ready. We need to look at our children and realize they can't be salt till they've got salt. And if the salt's contaminated, then it's no good for anything. That's what the scripture says. And they have to remember that because of our sin nature, it's more likely the culture will influence our children rather than the children the culture. So how can we send them out into the world until we have prepared them? You don't send a knight out to fight until he's prepared with all the armor that he needs. So the front lines really in the culture right now, what is up for grabs in the culture? It's truth. Truth is what's in the crosshairs right now. And until our children are steeped in truth, until they know truth, until they can defend truth, we would never put a defenseless child out on the front lines. And education is a frontline battle. It is not a sideline battle. It's not something that's happening in the periphery of our lives. This is happening in the culture in real time. This is the front line of the culture. This is where the battle for truth is being fought and it is where the battle for truth is being lost. And so we do not want our children out on the front lines. We are training our children to go out onto the front lines. And so to me, when we talk about salt and light, I say, let's put the people out on the front lines who are trained and ready for battle.